Good morning, Hojo staff, students, and families. Yad Teabin. We're ready to start our day, so please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Our voices are off and bodies are still. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, October 13, although it feels like Monday because we didn't have school yesterday. So welcome to the first day of the week, even though it's Tuesday. We have a new selection of music from Mrs. Neff, and we get to complete our collection. This is Vivaldi's Autumn. So we have all the other seasons we've already listened to, and now we're adding Autumn. It was a nice chilly morning out there if you've been outside. So let's listen to Vivaldi's, one of the four seasons, Autumn. What do you think about that? Is that what you would have had Autumn sound like if you were going to write a piece of music? It's sort of uh, kind of upbeat and peppy still. It's not after the long, hot summer, then the air gets cooler. Um, where I come from, we would go apple picking and go to pumpkin patches and things like that. And you start to wear sweaters and it's very chilly in the morning. So that music, reminds us of those kinds of things okay and just so we don't forget let's see the let's compare Vivaldi's autumn to this one tell me which season this is <laughs> did you say spring <clears throat> You're right. That was spring. <clears throat> How about this one? See if you can remember this one. Do you remember <clears throat> Claire de Lune by Claude W.C. All right, let's not forget those ones we've learned. <coughs> okay, <clears throat> tickle in my throat today. So we are, uh, we have been looking at all sorts of different artists. So now we're going to go back in time. Um, we've been studying some of the artists from the 1800s, the 19th century. Now we're going to go back to the 1400s. Remember we studied uh, the 1400s to 1500s. This is about 1510 this was painted. Um, about the same time, around the time of the Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci. This is Raphael though, Raphael. We have seen this one before, but in our school it's a huge picture and I couldn't fit it on my lap. So this is the School of Athens. That's right, it's a fresco. What's a fresco? Fresco is a painting on plaster, on wet plaster. So they put up wet plaster and they paint the watercolors right on the plaster so when it dries, it soaks that color right in. 
And so this is a fresco was painted on the walls inside the Vatican in Rome. Maybe one day we'll go and see if we can take a look at it in person. Wouldn't that be something? Raphael, let me hear you. School of Athens. That's right, School of Athens. And we see, you can't really tell because they're really small, but we have Plato and Aristotle here in the painting. You can see it better when you come to school with the larger painting we have. Okay, <clears throat> so poem this week is from Alfred Lord Tennyson. So Alfred Tennyson is an English Lord, or was an English Lord when he was alive. And so he's addressed by his title, Alfred, comma, Lord Tennyson. Don't always see a comma in someone's name, but you do. They're a Lord in England. So Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote this poem. It's very short. I believe it's from the fifth grade selection of poems. It's called the Eagle, a Fragment. If you have been in our fifth grade before and have memorized it, say it with me. He clasps the crag with his crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands. Ringed with the azure world, he stands. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls, and like a thunderbolt, he falls. Hmm. Alfred Lord Tennyson is describing an eagle. He clasped the crag. What's a crag? It's like a cliff, the side of a cliff. So he clasps the side of the with crooked hands, right? His talons, right? He clasped the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands. It's kind of lonely up there. Hmm? Nobody's hanging out in the crag of the side of the cliff. He's kind of all by himself. Ringed with the azure world, he stands. So he's above the sea, the azure, the blue sea. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls. And like a thunderbolt, he falls. That's The Eagle by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Okay, friends. Um, let's talk about the... Constitution. We say the preamble every day. I hope you say it with me. The preamble every morning. We the people of the United States. right? The purpose of our Constitution. Um, when we say we the people of the United States. In order to form a more perfect union. To establish justice. To ensure domestic tranquility. To provide for the common defense. Promote the general welfare. And secure the blessings of liberty. To ourselves and our posterity. That's the purpose of the U.S. Constitution. We wanted to have a more perfect union. So the Founding Fathers, the framers of the Constitution at that time, wrote the Constitution, but they structured how the government would be formed and how many branches of government do we have? That's right, three. President is the executive branch, the Supreme Court, the, in all the court systems throughout the country are the judicial branch, and we have a legislative branch. So we have our senators and representatives whom we're going to be voting on in just a few weeks, including the president, right? The president and our representatives will be voting on uh, coming right up, just a couple of weeks. Okay, so the Constitution, we, the, the states wanted to ratify the Constitution, but they wanted to have some protections for the people. So the person who would later become our fourth president was James Madison, wrote the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights are the first 10 amendments. That's right. So let's say them together. We've, we've studied the first two for a few weeks. We've been practicing and we just added the third amendment. So first amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia 
being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Third Amendment. I'm going to say a piece of it and then you repeat and then we'll do the Third Amendment again. No soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner or in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So remember, no soldiers. You don't have to have them living in your house and feeding them in times of peace or in times of war unless it's the law of the land. So let's do Third Amendment again. No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. I was just thinking, I wonder why they decided to put them in this particular order. Right? What made them write? Sometimes if you are gonna list out some things, sometimes you put the most important things first. So once we study all the other amendments, do you think that these are the ones that are, the ones that they thought were the most important to get done first, or are they all equally important? So it's just interesting because we, you know, 200 years later are looking back and trying to think about what they were thinking. But isn't it amazing that we have the longest lasting constitution of any country in the world and that it's still going strong right now. So something to be proud of. Okay, <clears throat> some birthdays today. We do have one birthday, but we had a birthday yesterday on the holiday. Andrea had a birthday and I know she had a very special birthday. Andrea, happy birthday. So if you see her today, make sure you say happy birthday. Uh, and also we have Robert in third grade is having a birthday today. Happy birthday, Robert. Robert was my dad's name. Okay, friends. Um, so we're starting our second quarter. So uh, there's nothing new in Canvas other than, you know, we'll just carry on with the work that we've been doing and you might be in the middle of a book. Doesn't mean that we start everything over again, but the, the grades have been collected from first quarter. In some cases, you may have an incomplete because you didn't get a chance to get all of the work done. Maybe you didn't have internet service or maybe there was some other problem and we're gonna keep working on it. But uh, we're also gonna carry on to, um, to carry on to do quarter two work. So we will have some new books available. So I know, for example, fourth grade is reading uh, Robin Hood and King Arthur, and you don't have those books. So we're going to make them all available, collect all the materials from all the different grades, and we'll tell you um, when they're available. Hopefully by Monday, you can come and pick up the books for this next quarter. Um, so other announcements. Oh, it's bring your family to PE week. So Mrs. Toledo Bale, who we all love, we all love her PE videos, um, has an activity for all st the students in kindergarten through fourth grade to do bring your family to PE week. So everybody can get up and get busy uh, being active and involved. So check that out on Canvas. Bring your family to PE week. Um, I think that's all we have for announcements. Uh, so let's do our student pledge. I will do the good, I will learn the true, and I will love the beautiful. And I hope you have a great day today.